Well, if you keep that hammer down and you load it up and truck in, we gonna do what they say can't be done. Yeah, it's Wednesday night. I threw a little uh, B-side Jerry Reed eastbound and down at you. This is Straight Cast, the glorified version of a bass fishing talk show. Yes, I'm Pat Renwick. Is Burt Reynolds dead? Is he dead? Yeah, unfortunately. We have to remember that if once someone is dead, Ginge, they don't come back. No. That sucks, all right? Let's remember that. It's a bummer. Golden rule, everybody. Golden rule. With that being said, it is Wednesday night, and this is the glorified version of a bass fishing talk show. I'm Pat Renwick, and that's Andrew Ellenberger, JP High, Ryan Whitaker, Danny Mohan, all on standby, and our guest tonight... Uh, dude, it's always a good time when this dude is in the house because he don't take no uh, he don't take no crap. You know what I mean? It's the hack attack, Greg Hackney. Yeah, Greg Hackney. Andy, there's a there's a shadow chasing me. I'm being followed by a moon shadow. Moon shadow. What what's going on? You see it? I see it. There it is. I Shadow. I think you moved something when I wasn't here. I didn't touch nothing, sir. I don't believe that. I did not. <laughs> but anyway, there's a moon shadow on me. <laughs> but hey, I- I'm excited. We're all eastbound and down. Yeah, life should just be Smokey and the Bandit movies, right? It'd be that uh, easy. 100%. 100% life would be so easy if it was all just a Smokey and the Bandit movie and we were smuggling beer and elephants. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Barbecue and asses and molasses. That's all it takes. It's all it takes, man. <laughs> all right. So speaking of all it takes, uh, this is our 10th show in a row, um, which was a goal that we kind of set out to do uh, was the old 10 in a row. We usually do um, three a month. I, I didn't touch anything. I promise. The, uh, I, the, we usually do three a month, um, but we decided to do uh, 10 in a row uh, just because, because the time is now. You know what I mean? And uh, this is number 10, and, and who else better to bring in to, to cap it but the hack attack? <laughs> yes. Zach DeMundo. Zach DeMundo. Um, I hope in light of everything that everyone is doing um, well out there and you are safe, uh, all kidding aside, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world right now, but... Um, we're going to have fun tonight. That's why we're here. We're here to have fun tonight, and we're here to talk to, uh, let's just say it, a legend, a beast of the sport, Greg Hackney. Uh, that's what it's all about. But down to business first, I uh, want to remind everybody the uh, Real Deal Savings events are still going on for Crestliner. Um, uh, Crestliner has some amazing uh, bargains going on right now for uh some pretty cool boats. Um, just going to tell you, check out Crestliner.com and, uh, and see what I'm talking about. Um, it's Father's Day almost. What is Father's Day? It's this month. Do you believe it's June already, Andy? That's crazy, Oh, right? my God, Bass Galaxy. It's June. This is nuts. This is nuck and futz. Absolutely that it's June already. But Father's Day is, is right around the corner. And, Andy, one of the cool things about doing a bass fishing talk show, as you know, is we, we get to hang out with cool people. So I've kind of gotten um, to know uh, somebody that, you know, that, that a lot of people admire, and that's Carl. Yeah. Carl from Carl's Bait and Tackle. And, uh, you know, Carl's a pretty cool dude. He calls me up, dude. Like, he don't call the Googans. No. Nope. Nope. He calls Pat. That's right. <laughs> Carl calls me. Pat, you catching him? I'm like, dude, yeah, not kind of, sort of, rivers up, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Carl's like, I don't know. Going to hang out with my dad, and you know, I actually got to meet Mr. Carl on Zoom. Carl's dad. Oh, yeah. Cool. His name is Carl, also, but with a C. Okay. Yes, they're both Carls. So anyway, what I'm getting at here is, um, Carl got Carl something special for Carl's da- dad's his Father's Day present. Okay. If you know what I'm saying. I'm keeping track. Yeah, I know that you know that he knows that you know that you know that he knows that Carl got his dad something special. At Carl's Bait and Tackle. Now, what he got him was a mystery tackle box. A monthly sub to mystery tackle box. How cool is that, Andy? Andy, who got you into fishing? 
My dad. Your dad. Yep. Uh, my granddad, Grandpa Paul. Grandpa Paul. Grandpa Paul. As got, opposed to Grandpa Paul. Grandpa Paul. Which, which I always thought you were saying. Hasoka <laughs> Tall, Grandpa Paul. He got uh, got me into fishing, and I would totally get my grandpa yeah. a mystery tag. Because he would, he, even if he didn't even fish that month, like when he was old and stuff, he just <laughs> loved it. the gift that keeps on giving, Clark. <laughs> he loved, exactly. He'd love to get the box. Um, go to Carl's, uh, shopcarls.com. Um, check it out right now. Become a member at Carl's Club. There's all kinds of Father's Day presents, or uh, presents, yes, presents yes, galore. Sure uh, is. Uh, sales going on for Father's Day at Carl's. Check it out. Aura, uh, as we would say in Yugoslavian. Correct. Um, hey, uh, want to remind everybody else, uh, birchgold.com. It's our third week uh, in a row that we've, uh, we've had Birch Gold uh, aboard. Remember, birchgold.com. Slash, I say forward slash stray cast, <laughs> birchgold.com forward f- slash stray cast. Um, hit that for a free info kit. And what that is, it's precious metal, precious heavy metals, not tungsten, but I don't even know if they're heavy metals, but gold, silver, platonium, all that good stuff. Aflac, you know what I mean? Yeah, all that good stuff. Um, but the real deal is, we all know we've been talking about it the past few weeks. Um, gold is a constant. In bass fishing, we need constant. Uh, it sucks if an investment goes sour. Um, you know, whatever that might be. Stocks, bonds. Uh, Ging used to play hard in the... Uh, in the uh, what, what? Penny stocks. Yes, the penny <laughs> stocks. And then you uh, used to actually work at the Wall Street. Not a lot of people know yeah. that about you. You were They made a movie. You were them. called the Hound of Wall Street, actually. <laughs> Red on the head like a hound on a hound uh, of Wall Street. Oh, boy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, that was you. Um, but the, the fact is, um, control the variables. Go to birchgold.com. Check out uh, the options of putting your 401k, uh, the, the whole deal. <laughs> Change. So here's, here's what I want to tell you. All right. No, 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 no. I cracked myself up. Hold on. So take all your existing millions that you have, Ginge. That's true. Your existing gazillions mm-hmm. that, you're, that you didn't tell Megan about. Your IRAs, your 401ks, your zabadabadoos. Yeah. All right. And transfer part of those, all right, into a precious metal IRA. It's that easy. Yeah. It's constant. It's always there. All kidding aside, birchgold.com forward slash straight cash. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. You know what else you can't go wrong with? Meat. Meat. Bubba. Bubba and Hanks.com. Uh, wagyu. Can you wagyu, Ginch? I wagyu. I wagyu all the time. It's good for you. It's good for you, man. It keeps you healthy. You know what I mean? Good old red meat diet. That's how I look at things. And uh, <laughs> and I love the Wagyu. I'm not going to kid you. That grass-fed beef is something special. Uh, code, redemption code. What is it, Ginch? Fish. Fish. Gets 15%. You 15. 15 off at BubbaAndHanks.com. Don't forget about half a spot official. What's good about half a spot? Thumbs up. A thumbs up. Boom. It's right there. You get the, uh, what do they call it on half a spot again? They keep, the notifications keep coming up. They give, <laughs> yeah. No, they get too much. They give you props. Yeah. Good props. Yeah. They give you the props on the half a spot. But the cool thing about half a spot is it's a good place to get a few uh, fishing spots. Like I'm getting ready to go make a little journey and I plugged in the half a spot and I got me some juice. Now it could be, you know, we're going to see. You know, I, I don't know. I want to catch some sockeye. So. That's what I put in the Sakalai app. Sakalai. Yeah, I put in Sakalai in the Half a Spot uh, app. Half a Spot official. Download uh, Half a Spot on the Play Store on Google or uh, on your uh, iTunes deal. Hey, uh, straight cast. Wow, I got a lot of stuff to go through. Sorry, right, you're doing good. Okay, thanks. I think I got two things left. Um, so first off, the Tin Cup Whiskey Drinking Game Word of the Week is Beast or Animal. Like something like that. Beast or Animal. So uh, we say that everybody drink some uh, tin cup whiskey or a beverage of your choice. You know what I mean? Uh, and then we'll tally it up at the end. Ryan Popcorn Whitaker will give us the tally. And because of all this, the good folks at Tin Cup Whiskey are giving you Bass Galaxy. Ooh. The good folks at Tin Cup Whiskey have stepped forward for this special opportunity for you, Bass Galaxy, to win a fifth of tin cup whiskey. That's right. All you have to do is like and share this live Facebook feed. Take it off privates. 
take out the privates, put it on like, and then share it. Yes, and here's your chance. Yes, to win a fifth of tin cup whiskey. Uh, compliments of tin, uh, tin cup whiskey fishing team, uh, Captain Luke Foley and the Hiptons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You hear that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why is my voice doing that? Yeah. It's time to change. <laughs> and it's time to change. Hey, speaking of change, let's put the power poles down. Don't change nothing. Don't go nowhere. The good times are about to roll with Greg Hackney when we come back. See you in a minute. All-new XF Series by Crestliner. Simplistic perfection with performance features built on a platform for success. The amazingly affordable XF Series by Crestliner. A brand new way to reel in bass. For more information and to find your local dealer, visit Crestliner.com today. The Crestliner Real Deal Sales Event. The best time to buy is now at Crestliner.com. Save up to $3,000 today. Hey, it's Carl, and I've got some big plans this fishing season. I'm hoping to get in the best shape of my life to have some of the best fishing of my life. And I want you to join me for Carl's spring training. Let's get it. Let's get it. The TH Marine Hydrowave H2 KVD Edition is a surefire way to ignite a feeding frenzy. The Hydrowave utilizes a sound emitting technology that imitates bait fish and other feeding fish below the surface that preys on the competitive nature of bass and other game fish to get you more bites. The Hydrowave is another way that TH Marine has you covered from transom to trolling motor. This is the mountain, and this is mountain whiskey. Unspoiled, untamed, forever wild. There's no safety net, no way down. Up here, it's just man and the mountain and his tin cup. Tin cup whiskey. Mountain whiskey. Saddle up the Palomina. The sun is going down. There's a bad hombre in our midst. Mist, whatever that word is. And uh, some call him a hack attack. Some call him bad news. Some call him good news. I just call him Greg. It's my old bud. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time. His 703rd appearance on the Stray Cast show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Greg Hackney. Yes. Yes. How you doing, Pat? I'm doing good, dude. Where are you? The Woolly Swamp? Uh, Kissimmee, Florida. That's close. I was close. Yeah, I, uh, I got up by 3.30 this morning and drove down here. Had a, uh, had a nice, peaceful drive. You are a beast. No doubt about it. Goodness gracious. 3.30 this morning. Nobody on the road or a lot of people on the road? Uh, not many. Not many. And, you know, honestly, the, the traffic overall all the way down here wasn't bad. I made good time and, Just cruising. and rolled in. Just cruising and thinking. Just cruising in. I always like to come a little bit early, you know, never know what, you know, prepare for the worst. Yeah. You know, that's what I always say. Well, you're, you're staying at a house? Is that what you're doing? Uh, we're actually staying at uh, Richardson's Fish Camp. Oh. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. It's been here since the fifties. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the amenities uh, speak of that as well. Huh? <laughs> uh, you know, I, rustic, 
<laughs> you know, we use the word rustic. <laughs> Not rusty, he, rustic. But, <laughs> but here's what rustic will do. It puts you in the right frame of mind. You know what I mean, Mr. Hackney? It's got it, it focus on one thing, and that's uh, that's the fishing at hand. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, uh, I, I do. Honestly, this place has the feel that there's been many fishermen here before me. <laughs> it, 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 does it smell that way as well? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, but it is a great location. It's right here on the lake. It's right. We're right here on the bank of, uh, you know, Lake Toho. And, uh, you know, we're getting ready for the heavy hitters deal this week. Yeah. And so uh, big, big, big money on the line this week. I mean, let's think about this, man. You and I, we, you've been coming on since the radio days at the bass buzz way back at the radio station and and you've been here on straight cast the past five years but um never have i had you on in june in florida of all i mean like uh, june in florida that's kind of like not happening dude yeah i mean honestly this is a, a new world for me and like in my entire career you know typically the months of you know, we've been here in January, February, and even as late as March, but never, you know, any later than that. And I fished Okeechobee a couple times in the fall. Uh, but like, I mean, this is summertime in Florida. Right. Yeah. It's hot. Uh, hot as to be. What I is mean, it? Like 90 there right now? Uh, you know, it was 92 when I when I got into like around Gainesville, it was 92 degrees when I was driving down and now it's cloudy and raining and it's 77. Pleasant, uh, but pleasant. You know, it, it looks to be that you know this whole week will be mid 80s it's a, a like 50 to 80 percent chance of rain every day and uh you know really good fishing weather for summertime you know what i mean because it's not going to be hot you right. know so it's going to be pretty nice and what what's is the heavy like tell me about the heavy hitters what exactly is that uh you know when the deal started it was going to be the top guys with the five biggest fish caught you know, in the first five events. Gotcha. So they would, they would actually take your biggest fish from each five, you know, the, each of the first five events. And, uh, and then, you know, things change, you know, there's with all this going on, the pandemic and uh, the COVID-19 deal. So it changed. And so now it's all the, the, the format is basically still the same. The difference is now they're all 80 of us here instead of the, uh, instead of the top 30 but other than that i mean everything else is the same so it's a regular event uh, then like a regular yeah BPT it's, it's based and it's going to be used like points wise you know it's going to be you know counted as a regular event what is unique about it is that you know i may be off a little bit on these numbers but i think the big fish of each round is like 50 grand and the big fish for the entire event is like 100 grand by itself now, not counting a regular payback. Now, this, this event pays. Yeah, this event pays. There's going to be a win. You know, there's going to be first, second. It's still going to pay, you know, basically the top 40 guys like a normal event. But if you in like in in your group out of the first two days, if you have the big fish, it's like a 50 grand payback. Dude, that's... And then if you have the big fish for the whole deal, not counting, you know, so a guy, you know, legitimately can win the whole event win 100 grand and win another 100 grand for the yeah. big fish of the event that'll I mean, make you thirsty crazy. yeah that's it that's a yeah that'll, that'll get you thirsty won't it dude you, you know this will be one of those events where you know a guy will be you know maybe i'm not on the you know the mother load i might need to just fish for one big one because you know one big one in this event is going to be so important yeah for sure i yeah i didn't know that was going on that's a good stake that's a good stick. Yeah, in the it, game. it really is. This is this is a great tournament. It's just that's like Vegas shit right under. there. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly what it is. Yeah. Exactly. You know, so. Dude. We rolling the dice. You know what I mean? <laughs> I heard that about you. I heard that about you. Hey man, I mean, let's let's get real about this. Uh you've done a few things in your career. What do you you've been at this how many years? Like Andy and I were talking about this before the show. 18, 19 years, something like that. Yeah, it's like 18 or 19 years I've been doing this now. That's like um that's legend uh a seasoned veteran status. You know that, right? Right, Greg, you know that. Uh, right? Yeah, instead of me getting old, that's what I say. I'm I'm like I'm I'm a seasoned veteran yes. now, not that I'm I'm getting older. I'm yes. just I'm I'm 
I'm a veteran. You're you're well seasoned. Well seasoned. Yeah, I'm well well seasoned. A lot of salt and pepper. Going on. <laughs> Preservatives like the old days. Yeah. <laughs> you had to keep that that uh, meat peppered on the trail. You know what I mean? That's right. <laughs> keep it preserved. But dude, come on, man. I mean, you've done so much in in your career. Um, I want to throw a couple uh a couple bodies of water at you. Okay, you ready here? Okay. Some fondness that you have for these bodies of water. Uh, Mississippi River, Sam Rayburn, Table Rock, Sabine, Texoma, Cayuga, Pickwick, the uh, Ohio Magnolia, uh, Albuquerque River, whatever the hell that was called, the uh, where you won that big deal for FLW. Yeah, um, that's just Pittsburgh, ain't it? Yeah, that's uh, yeah, I could, I can't pronounce those yeah, rivers. The Ohio, right it's called the that. Ohio Magnolia Albuquerque River. That's how you pronounce it. Yeah, that's it. perfect. That's you nailed it. it. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, let's let's just uh, let's be real about this, man. You uh, are a fierce competitor. Angler of the year, two tours. Uh, rookie of the year. You, you you won some derbs, man. I mean, you are a force to be reckoned with um, amongst not only uh, the fans but the peers, man. That the peers like. Ah, oh, they're like, oh shit, Hackney's up here with us, you know? I mean, that's a big deal, dude. Nineteen years of bassing. Yeah, it's uh, you know, I, I have been definitely blessed, you know, had a blessed career. You know, I you know, the the deal is I with anybody when they're starting out, you know, they're gonna become a professional bass fisherman and live the dream. You know, that's all it is is a dream. You don't know what's gonna happen. You know, you just wanna do it. You know what I mean? And for uh mine to turn out the way it has I, I i've definitely been blessed yeah man. you know because i didn't know i mean i just wanted to fish you know what i mean i'm like i'm that guy i'm like just that that guy you see at the boat ramp you know i just want to fish i just want to do that i love to fish you know like even during this period of time when we've not fished any tournaments i don't have you know I, I love to compete and i love tournaments but i also just love to fish and i've really really enjoyed the last couple months you know during quarantine that's all I did was fish. You know? we, we've been watching it. you. You know, I really yeah. did. <laughs> we've yeah. been watching you, man. And 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 it seems like that that the spark is um not necessarily rekindled. The spark's always there, but just there's more opportunity to fish the way you want to fish right now. While you're away from the grind, while you're away from fishing to pay the bills, there's more opportunities to fish the, the way that you want to fish at home. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it does. And, you know, I, I think that happens. I, I'll tell you, even that, like, I probably push that a little more now at my stage in my career than you, you go through that, you know, early on in my career, I just did everything. You know what I mean? If I need to be shaky head and I shake head, you know, drop shot, whatever, I did everything. And I just find that, and I, I think you'll see that with most all fishermen, as you age and you progress, you will have you still do a lot of that other stuff, but you, you start to depend on, you know, one, like more of a style of fishing Sure. and you try to push that more because you feel like that gives you the best chance of winning. And so I always now, like when I go out, regardless of where it's at, you know, I start looking for, you know, I like the power fish. Yeah. You're you know, for your be, style. It could be with a, yeah, it can be flipping frog and a plug, whatever, but I, I like the power fish. I just feel like, well, that's where I'm the most efficient. And so I always do that first and I always wait the very end of practice before I start doing any of that other stuff. Right, and you like have to. Before, yeah, like before I wouldn't have done that early on in my career, you know, I would have run in a place and if I couldn't catch them power fishing, then I would have immediately started doing the other stuff. And uh, I just find now that I've <laughs> matured that, uh, and you know, maybe instead of staying in that area, I'll just run to another area until I find what I'm looking for. Yeah. You know and it, I mean? and it works out for you. I mean, you've, you've, you've established that you've figured out how to do it. That's, that's old Greg, old Greg has figured that out, and, but there was young Greg, you know, at one time that was that, you know, let's, let's go 22 years ago. Shit, let's even go further back than that. You know, there had to be something that, that sparked your style, like flipping and winding and power fishing. Like, what sparked that? Uh, well, you know, I grew up in a part of, a, in a part of the country that, you know, I, I was very fortunate to grow up in a place where there were a lot of big fish. Yeah. I, you know, it, it took 20 pounds or plus 
all year long. Like, and sometimes in the spring, it took 30. And uh, so <laughs> I, you had to power, fish. you know what I mean? You had yeah. to power fish a square bill, a jig and a frog won all the turn, all the local events I fished in. And so definitely my mainstay, you know, but what, what happens with that is when I started fishing all over the country, you can't just jig and throw a frog and square bill all the time. You know what I mean? It'll you get you do, a bit. Yeah. You know, you just, to, to, yeah, because the deal is in this, in this, in this whole, in what we do, you have to survive until your time comes, if that makes sense. Of course. You know, it's, it's hard to make every event your event. You can make every event a good event for you, but it's hard to win all of them. And that's one thing that I had to kind of learn that, you know what, you just got to bide your time. And when that moment arises, then you just have to make the most of that opportunity. And, um, and so now, I, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. There are less people. It, it's, it's funny that out of our group, you know, of 80 anglers that, you know, that I fish against all the time that, you know, I fish in a way a lot of them don't fish. Like I, I find it pretty not easy, but like I, I spend a lot of time fishing by myself on these lakes Okay. because of the way I fish. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, cause yeah. I have a totally different, you know, I don't know the new generation of fishermen are coming up and there are a lot of great ones in our group that are, that are totally not the fish the way I do. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know if that style of fishing is dying off. You know what I mean? Or I don't know, but it's, it's really evolving. You know, I watch all these guys. I watch all the shows. I watch all of our TV shows. I watch all tournaments, you know, TV shows. And I watch it all, and I study that. That's really all we have to study. You know, that's our film. You know, that's what we watch. And uh, I just watch how this new group coming is evolving. Yeah. You know, they're they're more swim bait drop shot. Does that make sense? A absolutely. Like electronics. Be, that uh, Yeah. More, more electronics. Drop shot, electronics, that. You know, there are, there are, there are really, you know, not – there just seems to be less of those guys that can just run down the lake and go, there they are. Yeah, that, you it's, know what exactly. I mean? That brings like me that. to the point. Like, how do you, you must be able, or maybe you have to keep it, you have to keep an open mind about it, but, um, but you have to recognize, yeah, recognize. Well, feeding back there, man. You have to recognize when it is your derby. How do you know that it's your derby? Like, what tells uh, you? Well, Besides the fish, but... Well, you know, you just really kind of have to let those things happen and not force it. Does that make sense? Yeah, because, yeah. Like, you just kind of have to go out there and do your part, and then you just have to let that happen. And as you see it happen, then you react to it. But here's you know, the tough part. Let me stop you. Let me stop you. Here's the tough part. How do you, how do you, but your your goal is to force it. Your goal is to force the shallow bite. Your goal is to make it power bait, fi power fishing. You know, so like, uh, yeah, how do you, how you, do you not yeah, force you, it? You can't do that. That I've learned that the hard way too. There is no swinging for the fence. Right. That that, makes sense. I, I get. You want to do that every time. You know, you like I'll pick up the biggest bait I got and just go with it. Now, see, I would want it mentally here with one fish being so important. You would want to be that, but me being a realist, you know, being realistic about it, chances are the biggest fish caught in this vent probably will be caught on a small worm. <laughs> you know what I mean? You have to, An old Charlie Brewer, it, it, Brewer slider head. Yeah, exactly. You just it's, <laughs> it's almost come to the point for me, like when we go to a place where it's supposed to be dominated by small worms, that will be the place where big baits will play the best. And when we go to a place where it's got to be power fishing, then typically small bait. I don't know. It's always that reverse of the way you think. Murphy's you know, law. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, if, but like here's we the come deal. to Florida, you're thinking big weights, mats, you know what I mean? Yeah. Big top water, you know, just giant everything. And, you know, honestly, me, <laughs> I'm being, being realistic with myself. I'm like, chances are it won't be that way. This will be the derby <laughs> that I use the spinning rod. <laughs> you know, that's just the way it works. <laughs> but, that, but that proves my point, though. It's like you, at this point of your career, every derby that you fish, you are out. You want it to be a power fishing derby. You, that's what, oh, right, yeah, you always, that's what you want. Yeah. So like I, I go fishing quite a bit, but I'm, I'm not a professional angler. I don't even fish tournaments, man. But every time I fish, I cannot not fish how I want to fish. So I might do real shitty one day cause they're not eating a square bill or on the flip bite, but I'm still okay with it. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> but I'm not paying the bills with the with the with the with the weight. Yeah. You know <laughs> that, does, yeah, yeah, that, that does that mentality doesn't work. <laughs> You've seen you me swing I mean? fish. You really You've seen have, me swing them, Hackney. You know. Yeah, you just you really can't have bad derbies in this deal. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? And survive. You can't. You just can't. You can't force anything. I guess that's what I'm saying. You just can't. You never can force anything with, uh, you know, bass fishing. You just kind of have to. You know, you want it to be one way, but most of the time, you just have to let them tell you how they want it. You know what I mean? They will. There will be signs or they will, you know, uh, you know, something will happen out there on the lake that that keys you in into the way that you need to, you know. A hundred percent. And you got to be able to, and you just have to have that gut, you know, you, that's the biggest thing. So I spent a lot of time lately fishing with my youngest son and because uh, he was out of school during the pandemic. And, uh, of course, I was at home. And so we were fishing every other day. And that, that's the biggest thing that I've, I've told him the whole time. I'm like. When you think, when you, when even, I said, even when you and I are out here fishing, when something tells you, you know what, I, if I'm, if let's just say like, cause we had situations where, you know, I was throwing a thunder cricket and, uh, and like, I, like he learned about a rage swimmer during this <laughs> deal, like something he didn't know anything about it. And, and I, I was like, you know, and so, and then case in point, uh, uh, last weekend he was fishing on the, I was helping a friend of mine fill up some deer feeders. And, um, he was fishing on, uh, the, on the lake on the, on his hunting property. And, uh, you know, the deal was he's out there and he just, it just clicks. He needs to be throwing that rage swimmer and he has the best day fishing he's ever had in his nice. life. But that's the big thing I've, I've been teaching him the whole time. I'm like, this is a deal if, we're, if you feel something, if you feel like you need to be throwing a worm or you feel like you need to be throwing a jig at that point, I don't care what you're doing. Do it right then. Right then. You, it, right then. You got to try. Don't, don't you gotta, fight it. Exactly, man. I mean, and and that's the point. And the more time that you spend doing something, no matter what it is, Greg, you know it. All right. Whether whether it's uh, whether it's cutting lawns, whether it's having sex, whether it's bass fishing, the more you do something, you get better at it. You know what I mean? That's right. I, I mean, and then, I mean, nothing beats time on the water in our industry. I mean, if you want to be that guy, you spend the most time on the water. Yeah. I mean, you can't compete with it. You know, you can't compete with those guys that are out there every day because they just start to have that sixth sense that they just it, it's almost like they go unconscious when you spend so much time on the water. You just start to make those moves and you never think about it. And you, know, you don't you never overthink anything. You just it, it happens. It, happen. it happens. And that was you in 2014. That was you in 2014, dude. Like you weren't doing yeah. much wrong. You weren't doing much wrong yeah. in 2014. Yeah, 2014 for me was that year when the, I wasn't looking for them. They were looking for me. You know what I mean? The fish <laughs> yeah. were hunting me down. And, I, you know, that that's another one of those deals that, you know, you know, Clun had tried for years to figure out, you know, because he had those deals and he called it being in the zone. But there's no way to replicate it. No. If that makes sense. I mean, you, you can have good years and then you have that year. There, and there's... that year just happens i mean i don't know we you know we we've seen van damme skeet i mean they're edwin evers last year i mean you see guys have those deals and i and you know the deal is they just it's not necessary they're not working any harder than they did the year before but i can't explain it but just something happens where you know you're just completely instinctive right there you know the band pearl sense. jam you know the band pearl jam right I know him well. You, you, so you know the song Even Flow. Yes. All right. I mean, that's kind of you, Hackney. You know, you're yeah, Mister, you're yes. Mister Even Flow. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Hey, so there's a, in that song it goes freezing. Rest my head on a pillow made of concrete. Uh, think I seen a little better set of days. All right. Think about it. Think about that song. And then it goes Even Flow. Thoughts arrive like butterflies. But he don't know, so he chases them away. So what we can't do is chase those thoughts away. Just like you said, That's man, it. dude, it's even flow. So if it's if you are telling you, throw the jig, throw the jig. If it's, oh, swim that jig, swim that jig. Punch that mat, punch that mat. Wind that square bill, wind that square bill. Boom. You know, we, we just figured out that Pearl Jam were bass fishermen, and we didn't even know that. Dude, we are geniuses. Thank yes. us. 
Thank yes. us, Fast Galaxy. <laughs> there yes. you go. <laughs> yes. He don't know, so he chases them away. He might have to turn on a dome light. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're getting a... Yeah, turn... You're getting... There we There's go. There's Greg. You're scaring people. There you are. There you go. And then swing the phone just a little bit to your... We thought you were a marauder. There we go. Hey, there's Perfect. Greg. Gotcha. Thank you. Now, yeah, well lit. See how you did that? That was pretty Hollywood of you on yeah. the spot. But that's right. Even flow, man. We got to get the even flow in bass fishing, ain't it? Yeah, that's the deal. That's I the mean, same. even... And you know that there's so many times you fight that because you think, no, that's not the deal. You know, that can't be the deal. Yeah. That would be too simple. And then your and, buddy you know, jacks him on it. That's it. You know, most of our events are one pretty simple. You know what I mean? It's not like it's anything way out there. It's just being around the right fish and doing the right thing. And the big thing is just doing the right thing. Here, here's the fish a, will come. Here's a, and here's a hackney example. And I can't remember if this was 14 or not, but like you uh, uh, basically doing the, is Greg, is everything? Oh, there he is. The, so yeah, you're, you're, you're flipping all the time, flipping all the time. Flipping all the time. And then all of a sudden, you start throwing the weightless uh, the Ocho or whatever you were throwing it at the time. Like, you you made the adjustment to go from flipping. What was that? What lake was that? That was a Texas lake, right? Oh, that was, yeah, that was at Rayburn. Rayburn. That's Rayburn. Yeah, so so the deal was it, was, it was one of those situations where I could get some bites flipping, but because the water, you know, the lake was down, those fish were wanting to be extremely shallow. And it was the, the deal with that worm was that I could catch them all flipping. I could only catch a portion of them. Does that make sense? Yeah. But the deal is with that worm, I could catch the fish that I could catch flipping and then I could catch the ones that I couldn't catch flipping. But you figured that out the even flow. The whole, that was the even. Yeah. Flow. That, you know, that, that was the whole deal. And I just, you know, th those are the perfect events, you know, where you don't have to really make adjustments. You, you know what I mean? Like I, I basically use one rod one bait the entire event that's the I best never yeah that's the, the, best. the best everything i came by that you know that was another big key to that deal was i had i had seen some of those fish out there in practice you know knew they were out there and there were other places i couldn't but every target i came by i fished it like it i, I thought it had one on it does that make sense yeah you like were you were you, you were on to, yeah, you had to fish everything you came by, regardless if it had one or not, like it had one. So when you got around one, you would catch that one. You know, that was kind of the uh, – and, you know, flipping, honestly, is a pretty fast technique. You know what I mean? Of course. And those fish just wanted to bait soaked. And, uh, you know, a lot of times, even like, you, you know, the, it can be the deal from flipping a heavyweight to a light one. Just going to a lightweight just makes you slow down. It just takes longer to fish the bait. And that was really the whole key there was that weightless bait would make me, I had to make sure it went to the bottom and uh, it would just make me fish extremely slow, you know. But that adjustment is what I'm, I'm, that's why that came to my head. I remember that particular yeah, that tournament. Was, uh, but yeah. I, but, you know, that's another one of those tournaments. We had just come from, uh, uh, we just come from Amstead and uh, I broke a 10 pounder off on the last day or I, possibly would have, I ended up third. I possibly had a chance at that one. And then we rolled on to Rayburn. I didn't have a lot of practice for that event because we just came straight from um, Amstead over to, uh, over to Rayburn. And, uh, you know, it was one of those deals where, you know, I knew I was around a lot of fish, but you don't know that you're going to win. You, you know, you don't always know that you're around those fish and it, it's just that deal that you just got to let it happen, you know, and as the tournament evolved, you know, then I, felt like it was going in the right direction, you know, and then I would have a chance if I, you know, if I fish clean the rest of the event, you know, I felt like I'd have a chance, but you don't know. I mean, I've had, I've had practices where it was insane and not had a good tournament. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You got, I don't even like now take all that with a grain of salt. If I have a good practice, great. If I have a bad one, great. It doesn't really matter. I don't really worry about it either. What way. matters when it counts. Yeah. It just matters when it counts. Yep. And, uh, you know, practice is just that deal of, you know, getting a feel for the lake as much as anything, you know, because I've had good events where I really didn't catch that much in practice, but I got a good feel for the lake. Ran around and looked at it, kind of seen how it was setting up, and then just let that evolve when the tournament starts. Because, you know, the deal is we try not to catch hardly anything in practice. You know, pretty much our whole group is that way. And so a lot of times when you go into an area, you don't know how good it is until you put pressure on it. So you'll hear our bunch 
you know, they poor mouth a lot, but and typically, and, and it's not because they're lying. It's just because they don't know. They don't really know. Pressure. Yeah. They don't know yet because they've not went out there and won practice, you know, <laughs> Everybody in our group figured out a long time ago. Win in practice, don't best pay very practicer good. ever award goes yes. to Dean Rojas. Right. The, um. Yeah. So hey, so I got to ask you. Go back to 2014, man. I mean, like Road Warrior, both tours. All right. That's now. That's only. That's only like I'm a, a bad math. Or six years ago. That's like, I mean, that's not too long, man. That's taxing, dude. That's that's a lot of work. I, I you here's one. I wrote this down. Um, you were at Rayburn, uh, I believe, with FLW. You took third place, and then you got in the truck. That was the end of March, and then uh, at the beginning of April, right then, like days later, at Table Rock for uh, for Bass, and you took a third there. Like two totally different things. Big trip, boom, boom. That's an example of of even flow. Yeah, that that's that deal. That, like goes back to that time on the water. Uh, you know, that year was. You know, I just, you know, we, we, we started in Florida you know, I went from Florida to Rayburn to, you know, and wherever. And, uh, you know, the only thing the what I do remember about that year, I had a bad tournament at Beaver in the FLW. And the deal was, it was the sixth one and it was six weeks straight. I had fished for six weeks straight and that I was burnt out. I, you know, I re- cause I remember, I really hated that, you know, hated that tournament because that second day I just made some poor decisions because I was, I didn't want to do what I needed to. Okay. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I was tired of thinking about tired. Dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I, and I, I just remembered that that, uh, that Beaver Lake tournament that year was a bad tournament because I just didn't, you know, and I had some close call, you know, like, you know, I had to fish on the last, I, I, cause I, it's so funny how you remember, but I had a big one on that last day at table rock. I couldn't have won at Rayburn. And but I fished real good at that event, and then went to Table Rock and lost a five plus on a plug the uh, final day. That would have, you know, there there was a chance there. I you know I ended up winning two events that year, but I, I was so close to winning like four, like one bite away from winning four events that year is pretty crazy. I I, I swung a fish into the boat that year at Dardanelle. I'd have won there, uh, just a bat. You know, one I looked off and I flipped into a mat, and just as I looked off. Ugh. Fish blew up on the surface and got it, and I swung and swung him into the side of the boat. Would have been enough to win there, but then you know I can't complain because I there went to Pickwick and won the right. next event, right. and then the Chickamauga and finished fifth. You know what I mean? But I you can like, complain though because yeah, I, I mean, but I would you know I, I would have you know I'm like man, I was so close to having like the best year ever, and uh, but it was but that's always the way our deal is. It's all there are so many times one fish or two fish is the the difference between a disaster and a great tournament. You know, one fish that can, can completely get, get you going in the wrong direction or get you going in the right. Oh, they mess it's with just, you. We always ride that line, you know. It's just a fine line, you know, what we do. It's towing the line. Yeah, towing the line. Hey, uh, you ever heard the expression that life is like a, a test that um, you didn't study for? Never heard that expression. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, I've I, not heard that, but that that is a hundred percent true. I feel that way. Crazy shit happens to me every day, no matter what. I got like, oh, I, surely not you, Pat. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> Just, I would never have dreamed that in a million years. <laughs> I can't even walk down the street without crazy stuff happening to me. It, it, it's it even in COVID, it's nuts. But the, the the fact of the matter is, man, it's like we must adjust daily to our lives as as well as bass fishing um and what what controls everything greg just like in star wars is uh is a force right there's a force of the universe correct are you following me i'm following you 100 percent. okay so my question to you is if you had to think about it and and what is that force that force in bass fishing what is the force the power of the force in bass fishing. You know, it's it would be some outdoor force. You know what I mean? It wouldn't be bass fishing. It would just be the force of the outdoors, the you know, of that wild world that we, you know, chase those fish around in. Like mama know? nature, maybe. Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, it, it would make a great movie. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are things going on out there that, you know, we don't have any control over it. it it's, I, I think that's one of the reasons that I like to fish so much. I just like being outside all the time and seeing all that chaos, yeah, you know, it, all it, that, that, you know, it, it's, but it's chaos, but it's controlled and it's all for a reason. And it all happens the way it's supposed to chaos in the outdoors happens for a reason. Shad um, in a school and bass blowing up on them is chaos. And it happens for a reason. Uh, baby seals getting eaten by great white sharks is chaos, but it happens for a reason, Mr. Hackney. Okay. Um, yes, it does. See, that's that's the outdoor chaos. You hit on it, the force. I like it. I like it. All right. It it, it, hap- it happens for a reason, but there is a always a dark side to the force, correct? There's a a, a, correct. a a positive and a negative to everything. Okay. So in bass fishing, um, we have that power of the positive force, and then we have that power of the dark side. To us as anglers. What is the dark side of the force? I plead the fifth. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. Uh, uh, just as anglers? Yeah, I can give you my answer. Or no, let me let me hear okay. you first. Well, right, I'll do it. I'll do this for you because you think I'm going somewhere else. But the, the dark side of the force for me is myself. Okay? I thought you were going to say smallmouth. Oh, they hate me, too. Yeah, screw, screw them small mouth. Jesus, cry me. Get me started. You can have them, Hackney. Oh, my gosh. I just knocked over the fifth of 10 cup whiskey. That was a beastly no, move. Not. The uh, Thank God they think the 10 cup was on it. But, yeah, you can have the small mouth. You love them. I love them. But I hate them, too. I hate them. They call me names. Anyway, the dark side in Bassin is, is, is ourselves because, like, there's nothing on the water that can screw ourselves up as much as us. You know, we are we are our own worst enemy. There's no doubt about that it, in fishing. Oh my gosh, I hate it, dude. Like I that can, goes back to the even flow. We fight that flow. You know, I mean, dude, that's human nature. For you know, I I mean, the deal is, I and I, I'm guilty of this 100 percent in going back and making the same mistake again and knowing better. You know what I mean? Like, you, I I can't explain that, but it, it's. It's you called know, insanity. That perfection, but you know that human nature is the dark, no doubt the the dark side of the fishing world. Yeah, I beat you know, myself up it's hard worse to get than, away from that than than anything. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. And uh, exactly. <laughs> we do that shit all the time as bass fishermen. Yes, We're exactly. insane, dude. <laughs> That's the bottom line. You ever been in a fight, man? You ever you ever been in a fight? Like a yeah, fl- maybe. Like a flat out fist fight. I mean, yeah, maybe. Yeah, you're from that area. I know. <laughs> I could tell. I heard stories about that. I heard stories about that. I don't know. You got you probably got your ass kicked and you probably kicked some ass yourself, you know? I'd say that. Yeah, I, I wasn't afraid to tote a butt whooping if that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, I mean, in life, you get your butt kicked and you learn a lesson, right? But, um, in- well, Linda, that's what you're supposed to do. Yes. That, that's, that's exactly what you're supposed to do, <laughs> you know. But it's the same way in bass fishing, man. It's like, it seems like in yeah, life. Yeah, but I don't know. You know what? It, it's like some things like, oh, you touch that stove, you get burnt. <laughs> so you don't touch it again. And then there are sometimes you go back because you're like, ah, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me touch it one more time. I don't think it was that bad. That's like looking into the sun, right? Don't look into the That's sun, right. Greg. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it, man. Or like, uh, don't don't walk in quicksand. Were you ever afraid of quicksand as a kid? Yeah, you know, that's the deal. Like, there, when I was a kid, there was quicksand. What happened to that? I don't know. Where's that at? It's gone, but it's a real thing. And I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it was, but now it's not anymore. We need I to, guess it just all dried up. We need to be aware of it, though. You need to be, especially yeah. <laughs> where you are now at that 50-year-old camp, Greg. All right? Yeah. yeah. Don't let that. Now, there could be some here. Hey, the cool thing about this uh, place I'm staying, it's got a cypress tree grown through the wall. <laughs> Does it really? Yeah, you know, that's how I know it's been here since the 50s. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty, it's rustic. <laughs> as long as it don't go through the gas lines, don't be watch that stuff. <laughs> the old cypress line. <laughs> That's pretty cool, though, dude. What's what's the name of the town you're in? 
uh, Kissimmee. Oh, you're in Kissimmee. Okay, right there. Yeah, well, like, but you know, we're out here on the lake. It's um, you know what I mean. It's not in yeah in the city, but you drive through Kissimmee and then we're out here on the lake. Unincorporated. Unincorporated, exactly. What's the name of the town you grew up in? Uh, I grew up in a small town of Star City, Arkansas. Star City, Arkansas. How many people were in Star City, Arkansas? Uh, two thousand. Two thousand people. So when you grew up, um, like my town wasn't the smallest town, but at that time, everybody knew like that I I was Jimmy's kid. You know, uh, the cops knew I was Jimmy's kid. Uh, the teachers knew I was Jimmy's. Kid. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knew. I mean, you know, people people knew. Um, and I imagine in your town, they pretty much knew Greg Hackney. I mean, you're that. Everybody knew who everybody yeah, was. Yeah, everybody knows everybody else. And I mean, like, so the town I live in now has fifty thousand people in it, and everybody knows everybody. You know what I mean? It's yeah. still like it's. You know, I mean, yeah. So definitely. In a town of 2,000, everybody knew one another. So I, I still think, like, the last time I was there, my mother lives there. Maybe now it's, like, 2,100. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it, it's like it didn't. It, Ooh, big not population growing. boom. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think the deal is the offspring, the fryer, leaving the town. You know what I mean? The fry. <laughs> Uh, they're fleeing <laughs> no, but i mean I, I mean pretty much everybody knew what was everybody was up to and and in um in small towns there's that thing called chinese telephone you know and uh and that especially hey man when i was growing up like i can remember a time we were on a party line <laughs> yeah. like i'm not making this up <laughs> yeah. we're on a party line I'll never forget this. We had this neighbor down the street. My Did mother would be like, she's on the phone listening. He's she's a party listening line. to our conversation. We we're on a party line, man. Like 1-800. Like, like, hey, c- kind of like tonight. I mean, like, Stray Cass is kind of like a party line. That's exactly it. Like, you know, they had that sexy music going in the background on the, on the right. ads, like, late at night. You Everybody's know, listening, yeah, listening was, in to see was, what they're talking it about. It was like a 70s uh, music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you hear that, Greg. <laughs> Yeah, call up now. One eight hundred. Try me. Yeah, that's right. One eight hundred. Arkansas gals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're on the party line, and you and you and you're talking oh. away, you know. And then and then like like remember the party lines? It was like you would always think on the party lines. They had those in our town too. And then my dad would get mad. Cause I, I spent, you get $6 and 93 cents on the phone bill. And he's like, what is this 800 number, son? You, you ever get that? <laughs> <laughs> then you get an ass whooping. Remember that? You remember that change. You got those ass whoopings a couple times. <laughs> that was even long distance. Remember long distance calls? Like how much trouble we used to get in for calling long distance. You call the next next county over. It was long distance and cost your cost your parents fifty bucks. Hey, there was a time when people made collect calls. Yeah. Would you accept a call from Pat? <laughs> nope. Not <laughs> happening. <laughs> <laughs> click. <laughs> hey, speaking of calls on the line, and uh, I mean you in your days, man, you had to hear some some good pickup lines, Mr. Hackney. Like some Back in the day, back in back in that two thousand population, our Kansas town, like give me a give you, me. A, you know, I, I will tell you in the in the early nineties, there were a lot of smooth lines out there. I might have used one or two myself. That's what I'm saying. I wanna I wanna hear a Greg Hackney pickup line. Yeah, I don't. I, it's been so long since I used the pickup line. I might not even know how to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're on the party line, you didn't have like a like a deal like a like an opener. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, like, God must be missing an angel because you just fell down from heaven. Like, yeah, exactly. There was a lot like of that. that. <laughs> I'm stupid like that. <laughs> uh, I bet you did all right, man. I bet you did. Yeah, you look, you, but you look back on that and you're like, wow, did I really say that? <laughs> I know. It's so dumb. And then the times it worked. Now, I'm going to give you a pickup line that I used one time, and it worked. Okay. Now, uh, this is gonna be good, I promise. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is true. This is a true story, <laughs> not a true story I made up, but so I remember it was a hot summer night. It was a hot summer night, Mr. Hackney, and 
me and my friends were, were cruising around like we did, you know, in Lansing, Illinois, cruising around and and uh, and there she was by the old quickie mart. And uh, I said to her, are you pissed or just hot? She said, I'm hot. And I said, get in the car. And she did. <laughs> and the rest is history. Never happened like that again. Never again. It's true. <laughs> Well, I'm sure you tried it again. <laughs> I did, and I just got shot. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 100% and got shot down every time. But are you pissed or just hot? And my buddies to this day would be like, I can't believe that worked. How did that even work? Yeah. I was like, she was dumb. Was like, <laughs> so that's not even a pickup line, Hackney. <laughs> it's really not. It's really not even a pickup line. It's just something completely stupid and ridiculous that happened to work once, and then I was dumb enough to think it would work again. That's it. That's it. Uh, when's the last time you tried it? No, I did, probably uh, 30 years ago. So I'm okay. talking to Zona today, right? Speaking of 30 years oh, ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is so stupid. Speaking of ridiculous, I'm talking to Zona today, or texting with Zona, and we're talking about, we grew up in the same area, you know, so we're, we're texting about some spots, you know, and he tells me to go try this, this, this one spot by these condominiums, and I'm like, I don't know, man, it seems, it seems kind of, uh, it, it, it seems kind of rough over there, you know, I don't know, you, you, you know, I'm like, all right, I'll send the intern over there and see if there's any fish in there, and I'm like, Z, when's the last time you've been there, and he's like, well, I was there like 30 years ago, they had time to rest. <laughs> See, that's Zona. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Sending me on a goose chase. I, I will be I will be honest with you. One thing about Zona, what I have been amazed by, him and I have spent a good bit of time together and uh, around different people, you know, people from different walks of life, and he has a knack for pulling out the dark side of people. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say about that, but he has a special knack. Yeah, he does. He get, he gets side. off on it, is what he does. Yeah, he he can get people to tell their deepest, darkest secrets. And then he, know? and then he, and he's, he's, I don't know how he just all of a sudden the next thing I know they're they're just flowing stuff out that they probably should not be saying. Yeah, and he's got a halo on the whole time. Yes, he, Saint he Mark, does. He Saint does. Mark. But he's just, I mean, he just sucking the dark side out. Yeah, yeah. he has a knack for. He's that. a succubus. He's very talented at yeah. that. And like I'm telling you, I've been several different places several different states i've just noticed that he can just i just stand around and wait because i know it's coming can we <laughs> refer to, to get can to, we refer to him as the succubus of the dark side yes okay thank you because he really yes. don't have a nickname besides z right so right that's him the succubus of the dark side he is from yeah, and on. you know it refers to his boat as the death star so i mean it yeah. just fits with the dark side it's perfect now it's all coming together, isn't it? Pearl Jam, yeah, it, it does. Pearl Jam, and and Zona Dark Side. That's all coming together. Pearl Jam, Bass Fishing, Zona Dark Side. Boom. Yes, perfect. We're we're philosophizing, Mister Hackney. You see how we're doing this? <laughs> Speaking of, I feel uh, like we've solved a lot of problems. We honestly, are, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and if and, and exactly, if everybody takes into consideration everything that we've talked about so far tonight, and just remember the golden rule of life and bass fishing then everything is just going to be fine, Greg. That's it. That simple. That simple. We, pro we probably should have had this conversation at the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, just to make things easier, you know, I mean, uh, to make them a more of an even flow, if that makes sense. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Greg, when I'm king, things will be different. Don't worry. Yeah. I don't worry. It'll be fine. <laughs> hey, uh, I want to talk to you. I am a shallow water power fisherman myself, and I model my fishing after gentlemen like you, uh, Rick Klun, uh, Gary, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, Brower, all right? KVD. Like, I love shallow water power fishing. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of tell you real quick my, my deal. Always something to flip, okay? I always got something to wind. I always have something to drag. And I always got something for the top. All right? That's, that's kind of covering me. And variations of for, for shallow water. Do, do you, can you give me some of those variations that you use in those, in those categories? Wind, flip, drag, top waters? I mean, the favorites, the go-tos, the staples of Greg Hackney. You, you know, used to like 
like fishing. I, I, mean, I still, one of my favorite ways to catch them is on a spinnerbait. But I'll be honest with you, a, a thunder cricket to me catches twice as many fish now as a spinnerbait does. That happens, so doesn't I, it? I, like, so that's like, it's kind of like a replacement for the spinnerbait. Not a replacement for the spinnerbait, but the, the spinnerbait for me now personally has become more of a niche bait where the bladed jig has become more of tied on 365. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's hot, cold. I mean, I've just shelled them at home with it, yeah. you know, before <laughs> the spawn, after the spawn. It doesn't. It's like, always it's pretty crazy. Yeah. I mean, you know, all of our guys throw it. You, you know what I mean? Like it's everybody's throwing it because it's catching fish. I, I wonder if in time that will be one of those baits that will be like a spinner bait. It'll always be around, but maybe there'll be something else that comes along down the line that kind of takes, but that, so that's that one, like, happens, I'm right. still square bill. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I'm just a big fan of a square bill. Uh, I like big square bills. I like a 2.5. I like a 4.0. You know, I mean, I like an 8.0. I like <laughs> big square bills. Um, hey, while you're talking about the know. square bills, I want I want to ask you something. You, um, you, you always have a wood one tied on as well. I, I know, I, I know that about you. Um, and I think I don't everybody, talk about it, I know I you don't talk about it. And I, but I mean, I, we all see it as bass anglers. And I mean. Um, that, that, that 1.5 amazing square bill. I've caught hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fish on the dang thing, but I've also caught hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fish on, on the wood baits as well. And there's a time and a place for both of them. There really is. There's a time and a place. And I want you to tell us the straight up skinny. What, when are you throwing the wood and when are you throwing the plastic? Be straight about it. Uh, you know, more times than not, like <clears throat> there'll be something if I'm cranking grass, it's all about a 1.5 or a 2.5 rock, typically 1.5, 2.5, uh, around wood, uh, fishing extremely shallow. Maybe the water is extremely hot. Maybe there's high fishing pressure. Uh, there are just, there are certain situations when that, again, it kind of goes back to the even flow, but in situations where it just screams that wooden bait, yeah, and you know, the wooden bait is a niche bait for me. All right, so growing up, I didn't throw anything but a wooden square bill. You see that one right there? I see it. That's a that's an OG original mint Bagley Balsa B three in 09. You know 09. That's the yeah. old chartreuse I, back back, Mister Hackney. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I might have one or two. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like I'm gonna be real about this. You remember back in 2000 when when Rick Clun uh, won just about everything in the world on this bait right here. And and we were all paying, you know, we were trying our best to find them. We were digging in grandpa's boxes. We were digging in our stuff. We were going to old tackle stores and and we're all guilty of paying outrageous prices for these baits. I paid one hundred dollars plus for these baits. I'm that dumb. Um, and uh, and and hand carves um, are not cheap either. But they do special things, man. They do. There's a magic. They, they do. They're, they're, they're a niche. You know what I mean? They're a niche bait that it's nothing else has ever filled that niche. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. You can't, you can force those other baits. They just don't do the same thing. They're softer. I'll, I'll be honest with you. They're, they don't hit as hard. They're, they're softer. Uh, the good ones to me, you know, they, they work real easy. If that makes sense. You don't have to turn the reel at a fast rate of speed. You get, you know, the right action out of them. And what is that? And, uh, what is it? They work right. They work easy. What is that? Is that hunting? Uh, is that just, a hunting yeah, bait? Well, yeah, but but some extent. But, like, some of the better ones that I've had do not hunt center. Like, I don't have to have one that hunt center for it to be good. Okay. Well, that, that I, if you're cranking it out in open water, that hunting center makes sense. Okay? Yes. But if I'm fishing around a piece of cover, I'm going to make it deflect. Mm -hmm. I don't need it to, I don't, I, I don't necessarily, if I'm throwing out a piece of cover, whether it be a cypress tree, a piece of wood, what it would be, I don't want it to go off track. Does that make sense? Yeah. And Clun has said that many it, times too, but not explained it like that. Well, so the deal is if I'm throwing out there, it what's cool about a bait that hunts center is, and like now most of like 1.5s, they do that. Right. In out in open water. So what that does is it gives that bait that deflection like action when it didn't hit anything, which would trigger those fish to bite it. But if I pull up on a piece of wood, the last thing I want it to do is when I throw it to hit the piece of wood is to run off of it. You know, I don't want to just get to the goods and all of a sudden it runs to the left. Right. You want to be knocking back. it. You want to knock it. 
yeah, I need it to track true when you're fishing a piece of wood. So it's not that big a deal for me for them to, you know, they've always said, oh, well, you know, if it, it, it goes out, wanders off to the left and it wanders off to the right and it comes back to center, that's the one you want. But that's not necessarily true because when I'm cranking a piece of wood, I want to know where it is all the time. You know what I mean? I, I, when I crank it down, I, when, I want it to hit the wood. I'm, I'm making it hit the wood. I don't need it to do that. So would it, But like out in so open it, water, that's a huge key because you're not hitting anything or you're cranking over grass, you know, for it to, to hunt center, you know, to go back and forth. But on a piece of wood, I just need it to have the right action. And I know when I tie, and again, I can't, that's one of these deals I can't explain, just goes by experience, but I can pick up a wooden square bill because none of them are the same. Because the problem with a wooden square bill, what made plastic baits, so this is the deal. If I throw a plastic bait out there and get it hung, I ain't scared to break it off because I got another one in my box <laughs> that will do the exact same thing. The problem with a wooden bait is no two pieces of wood are exactly the same. Yeah, so you never get two wooden baits that are the same. So you would have to go, you know, that was Clun's biggest issue with the wooden bait was he hated them because you had to go through four or five of them to find one that was good or one, not necessarily one that was good, but one that did what he wanted. What he wanted. To do. Yep. His A, B, C's. Yeah. And, and, you know, and so back in the day, like guys, like the, the wooden crankbait builders are much better now than they were then, because then they just took a piece of uh, balsa wood and they carved a plug out of it. So it, they didn't do it. They, so they got another piece of wood and they built another <laughs> one. So now some of these builders, you know, actually they weigh their wood. So they try to get two pieces of wood that are as close as possible to same. So the wooden baits are as close. They, as they get can sciency. The they get science. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, so they figured that out. So that's the reason that the, all these wooden baits are different because the wood's different. You know, you can't get, you can't cut two trees down and the wood weighs exactly the same, exactly. you know, so that was the reason. So now they've gotten better. You know what I mean? Like they're more consistent. Now, if you, if you buy a wooden bait, chances are, if you buy another one, it, it is real similar to the first one you bought because these guys that are built, you know, they're not mass producing them. You know, they're only producing a small number, you know, Bagley baits were mass produced back in the day, you know, so they were going through lots of wood, you know, so. Yeah. Different what, years, different, different grades. But yep. the deal is, you know, people got tired of, you can touch the trolling motor with one, it explodes. Yes. You know, pose crank bait same way 300 pose were and 400 pose were great deep yep. plugs but and i got that one you know right they, there. yeah they come all to pieces if you touch a you know you touch anything with them where i can pick up that uh kvd 1.5 and beat it all around the boat <laughs> and fire it out exactly. being that grass right off it right They'll... yeah that's right you know so there there's you know again wooden baits have their place but they're just more niche for me now i don't like to, to depend on them as much as you know, I once did, you so, know, because, and I, that's another thing used to, when you went to the tackle store, like, I, so there was a place in Crossett, Arkansas, Jim sport about my whole life had a wall of Bagley crankbaits. I never bought, but two, I'd go in and buy two chartreuse and black ones. If something happened to it, I'd go back and buy another one. I never <laughs> dreamed there would be a day where you couldn't buy them anymore. Right. I mean, at a wall of them, I could buy all the Bagley crankbaits I wanted. It wasn't a big deal, you know? And, um, you know, it's funny, our, our, there have been a lot of old baits like that that have went away, you know what I mean, or went away like from way they were. Wiggle warts, that's another one. Yeah. You know, yeah, I know they're still made or whatever, but there's a, you know, there's a huge cult following huge. for original wiggle warts. Absolutely. You know, and Absolutely. again, what that that original wiggle wart did, it, it's a one, it wonders, you know, it hunts center, it goes back and forth, it's crazy. You know, so, but so what, David I, Fritz, what, I had a conversation with him about that and he didn't like that because he wants that bait when he throws it out there and reels it. He wants to know exactly where it is. hundred percent. Yep. You know, 100%. he yep. wants to put it where he wants to put it at, you know, so there's a, there's an argument for both sides on those baits, you know, the ones that, you know, work, that are wild acting and the ones that hunt straight. But when you're trying to hit a spot, a certain spot, and you want to hit that spot, every cast, you need a bait that track straight you have know? you ever have you ever so personally person. have you ever personally sat down with clun and had a, had a square bill discussion like the two of you just the two of you? uh we, we we did you know actually it was at a bass open on at columbus and uh uh columbus mississippi and um uh, on the tom bigby and um uh, the deal was him and i were fishing in a similar area and i you know i'm, I'm leading after the first day this has been you know, I don't know, a long time ago. Anyway, I was catching them on a B3, uh, 
uh, Bagley's B3. And the deal was I caught the second day, I caught a big one and another keeper right off and messed it up. And I didn't have another one like it, you know, cause that was, that was, this would have been early 2000. This was have been about 2000. That's about when it was. Okay. It's, I just started fishing the, uh, maybe it was 2002, one or two. I don't know. Anyway, I just started fishing the, uh, I just started fishing the opens. Uh, it was the first, it was either the first or second time. I guess it was the second year I fished the opens. Um, and, uh, and we were in an area and anyway, we were talking and he had, I can't remember what plug it was, but anyway, he had some wooden plugs then or whatever. And, and we had that conversation and it came, and that's what came up about the conversation was he said, that's the reason he quit using them because every time you got one working right and something happened, then you didn't have another. Yeah. And then it jacks with you up here too. And he, he yeah. And he was, and he was doing everything that he possibly could to find, uh, you know, something else. I can't remember. Yeah, you would know those wooden baits that he was thunder using. Shads. Thunder shads. The thunder. They were thunder somethings. Were they the ones That's, he was making? Yeah, and they had a square. They were, you know, they were they were square bill and they were wooden. But I think they were made of cedar. I don't think they were. I, I'm, I can't remember if they were made of uh, if they were made of boss or not. But anyway, him and I had that conversation. I still ended up high in the tournament. I didn't win, but and. Uh, and I don't know if the baits I had after that, you know, it bothered me mentally. See, that was the other issue, and I think that was what he didn't like about them. When one of them went bad, you had one good, and you're catching fish on it. Something happens to it, it kills your mentality. Oh, it messes you up a, a big time. Yeah, mess. It, yeah, mess. It messed me up during that term. I, and so the deal is now, I, I. So when you pick up one that you don't feel like is as good, you don't have that confidence with it. You don't fish it as well. You know, anytime you have confidence in a bait. You will fish it to a point where you can probably catch them. You're on. unstoppable. You know what I mean? Yeah, you feel unstoppable. Yeah, you feel like you feel every cast you're going to catch one, and that's the way you got to be. And when you get one, it was messed up. Anyway, that was the big reason I quit, you know, got away from them too. I'm not completely, again. You, you know, always got completely one tied on. You always have one in I got a box of them in this truck right now, and I will throw here in Florida if I need to. <laughs> but more times than not, you know, I'm, I'm not doing, and you know, I don't do that. It's kind of a niche, you know. Sure. More of an What's the bait? Like what? I mean, I, I don't expect you to, to to give away the exact juice, but what are you doing? You got old Bagley's. Is that your go-to? Are they hand? Uh, no, I don't have any anymore. I got rid of the, these. Uh, the baits I have now are are still produced. They're produced now. Okay. You know, it's just a guy making them in his shop. Or just a hand carve a little mom and popper. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. There, there, there's some good and ones. And they're, 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 you know, and he just copied original, that bait that you just picked up and showed everybody. Yeah. He copied, I have twos and threes and he copied that bait. That's the bait he copied. Okay. The bill's in the same place. The eyelet's in the same place. There's a, and so I'm not, I'm not trying to sell baits here by any mean. This is not a sponsor, but I just want to tell you, there's a guy called Ira C. And I don't know if you've seen those, those square no bills. I, Dude, that's a, that's the closest thing. To the OG Bagley I have ever seen. He, uh, out of uh, it's out of Oklahoma, Ira I R A C, the letter C, amazing, amazing stuff, amazing. And I love bags, yeah. man. I, I love the old bags. Hey, uh, let's cross the I's and dot the T's. What do you say? Okay. I mean, let's let's get to it. Change. Give me some. Uh, give me some mood me, mood music. How about some some mood mood music? What do you want to hear, Greg? Oh yeah. This is kind of. How about some Pearl? I was like, I, I mean, like, we got to have Pearl Jam. Well, we, they'd kick us off. <laughs> Facebook doesn't like yeah, that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, they'll boom. Because they'll, Zona had an opening song for you that was very dark side, by the way. I'll, I'll actually send it to you when we're done. It was very dark, and uh, we couldn't use it because of copyright he, issues. He, he does like that dark area. I don't know what the deal is with yeah. that. But... So, something happened. Something happened. Let's cross the I's and, and, and uh, dot the T's here. Um,. The, uh, what's the three best things about bass fishing? Three best things about bass fishing to you, Greg Hackney? Uh, excitement. Okay. Outdoors. Outdoors. Uh, anything that can crush your spirit. It's always right there to crush your spirit. You gotta keep a lookout. You gotta, you gotta keep, keep a lookout. Yeah. You gotta, you know, out. just remember this fish don't care. You are, they are cold blooded. <laughs> they are. Remember three stooges, how you always had to have your, <laughs> your deal like that. 
You know what I'm saying, Greg? That's right. That's, that's, yeah, that's that. Right. Poink. Is a pop. It, it, it's like having that psycho girlfriend. You know what I mean? It's like that roller coaster ride. Yeah, yeah. You know, I guess that's all I can explain it. Ooh, it's good sometimes, but then it's scary. Yeah, well, that leads me to my next question. What is the three best okay. thing about women? About women? The three best thing oh, about Oh, well, women. Yeah. you know what? There, this is like, you know, there are a couple things that I don't talk about, and that's one of them. Okay. There's women. Yeah, I don't. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not going there. Okay. <laughs> you know, they're like you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not, you know, I don't talk politics. Yeah. I don't really get into religion, and I don't talk about women. <laughs> no, okay. I, 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 I'm just a safe type of guy. You know what I mean? I, I just, you're playing it safe. We don't talk about. We don't make safe. fun of Rick Clun or Mike Ditka, uh, or Jesus on this oh, show. That's our three I rules. Our three rules: don't make fun of Ditka, Clun, or Jesus. We make fun of everything else on this show. That's what happens. That's what it is. Hey, uh, so if I had to ask you this, what are your three favorite quarantine pastimes? Besides fishing, obviously fishing. But what were your three favorite things that you did? You or with the fam or whatever it was? Uh, uh, probably, you know, not fishing. Number one was just probably grilling out. Yeah, everybody's you know, been eating. A lot. We've been eating a lot. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we just... I mean, it's a barbecue every, it was a barbecue every day, almost <laughs> a quarantine. Uh, you know, honestly, just sitting around and not doing anything and just being simple. Yeah, bud. You know, that, I do. You, you know what I mean? Like, that's the first time I just really got to sit around and like, I was really, I had a lot of anxiety like the first couple weeks. You know, maybe the first two weeks of that whole quarantine deal, you know, what's going on. And then after that, I kind of got to liking it, yeah. you know, I mean, where I just kind of I was like totally relaxed. Now, I've not felt that way the last couple of weeks because we we're going to get back start, you know, fix get back started. This yeah, week you get whatever, antsy. But, yep. but like during the middle of that quarantine, I mean, I mean, I'll tell you, I was simple. Did, simple. did, did you find And me? you know what? I, I required a taste for beer during quarantine. Wow. That's probably the third. You know, that's been pretty good. To me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's some hops and barley there for you. Yeah, there you go. I, I've been that, 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 that beech wood. I've been <laughs> had a taste of the beech wood. You know what? What um, you're talking about simple things, and and what one of the things that the quarantine has has done for me, and and uh, or this pandemic or whatever you want to call this time. Uh, period. It, it it's made me appreciate simple things as well. Now I'm not getting getting fluffy here or anything, but man, like I, I, like just looking at clouds and cool stuff like that, or like how amazing uh, Coca Cola tastes. Like just stupid simple things, man. <laughs> That's awesome. You, you know what I mean? Like it's like I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or what, but I'm like, man, Coke yeah. is really good. You know, it's like, a, you know, or like, wow, that is great. Clouds look cool, man. You know, and I'm not even high. I'm just looking at clouds and they're cool. You know, I mean, I'm like, well, I was fixed to say, what are you putting in the coat? No, no. It's just like, I mean, I don't know. It's in other words, it's making you me, sure you didn't slip just a little of that tin cup in there. No, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's not that beastly, Mr. Hackney. <laughs> but no. No, I, maybe it's that the fact is that I am appreciating things more because I have more time to appreciate them. Things slowed down. Is that what it is? Things slowed down. You know, I, I think you, I, so I'm not, I'm going to speak for everyone. I may not be right in this, but I, I think a lot of the world figured that out during this. Now, I know this deal has been traumatic for a lot of people, but there's a lot of other people that had an opportunity to slow down that it's probably the first time in recent times they have slowed down, exactly. you know, slowed down. You know what I mean? Like, yes, like there, I, in a way there are going to be people find out that, you know, and me including, you know, because again, I'm, I'm talking about myself in a way about this, that, you know what, the simple things in life are the most important. And, you know, we have been in that rat race where you don't ever slow down and you don't ever get to enjoy those things, yeah. you know, and I like, just like me sitting around the house, I'm not, it was almost like summer break. Yeah. You know, like my kids were out of school, you know, because of the deal. Get and the I slip was and slide out. typically I'm gone all summer, you know, during their holiday, you know, when we try to rush a vacation in between tournaments and do that stuff. And, 
you know, and even my wife said that just sitting around the house and and just wow, it's it's nice it, yeah. every now and then just to do nothing. It it is. You know, we do so much. We've created this lifestyle where we have to go wide open, you know, every day. And uh, you know, I'll be honest, just like fishing around the house. I mean, just you know, I'm not in a hurry. I go out there. I never run my boat over three thousand RPM. Just putt putting around, <laughs> just really, just enjoying life. You know, you know, looking at the clouds, looking at like enjoying what I got. You know what I mean? Like it's almost like we, we you know, we have that lifestyle where we want more, 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 more. Yeah. You know what I mean? We can't ever have enough. Always. We never have enough. And uh, so during this period of time, I just feel like a lot of people got to sit back and go, wow, maybe I have everything that, I need. That's right. There's you two know, ways you right can here. do it. There's two ways, Greg. And a lot of people took um, either direction, the good side of the force or the negative side of the force. Okay. The good side of the force is how you described it and, and kind of how I described it. And that's uh, observing, making gratitude lists, things we're grateful for, man. Like bass fishing right. is freaking awesome, dude. It's awesome that we are involved in the world of bass fishing, isn't it, Greg Hackney? That's that's amazing. Yeah, it's isn't it? We were meant for that. That's what I'm saying, man. Just like Pearl Jam, you know, we, we, we can't chase those thoughts away. That's what it is. Now here's the problem that we have to do. Sometimes we do have to chase the thoughts away, or we go stir crazy. OK, because in the quarantine deal, like a lot of people went the other direction. They got lost in themselves instead of realizing the good things. They dwelled on the negative things and it drives a lot of people crazy. And then that three months or two and a half months, it got bottled up. You know, it gets bottled up and it explodes. So the deal is, man. We need to learn. Well, we were on the good side of that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I really, I feel sorry for anybody who didn't get an opportunity to experience. That. That's what I'm trying you, to say. Thank you. 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 I, I, yeah, I really hate that, but I know what you're saying. You know, I know. You know, it, it does seem like that, but you know, hopefully for the mass majority, you know, they got an opportunity to feel that simplicity. I, I, it is what it is, but it's 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 that simple life, you know. I mean, we, again, because we don't we we have in our mind we need things that we don't always need. It's not you about material I mean? shit all the time, don't you think? Yeah, it's, it's not. Don't, it's not. Don't you think if people tried to to tune in to that or or let it happen and not chase it away, that that we wouldn't have a lot of the, obviously. There's nothing you can do about a virus, but uh, I mean, but the, but the, I mean, or, you know. The, Pieces it's a shame that we had to have a pandemic before we got to experience right. it. Right. It, it takes. Something. You know what I mean? Yeah. We've had. We just. We just came out like we were in a period of our economy and the way things were going. The best it had been in, you know, forever. You know, whatever. Like far as things were going, rolling and everything was good. And uh, it's a shame that you know, like for me personally, that we needed this pandemic to slow down and look at it. Right. And see it, what we had. It was there the whole you time. Know? If we would have yeah, just been there the whole time, we just need to watch Ferris Bueller more. You know that, right? Yeah. Just every now and then, we just need to take a break. Yeah. I mean, you know, don't let and it just pass sit you back by. and look at. Yeah, don't let it pass us by. There it is, man. You know, because you you only go around once. Hey, um, what's your guilty pleasure? What's something that you cannot say no to? What can you not say no to? Besides Ooh. crossing the eyes of a big old bass. I mean, I'm. Mean, what can't you well, say? Well, that doesn't count. Yeah. I mean, that, you know uh, what I mean. What's your guilty pleasure? Your kryptonite knocks you down, but you got to have it. Man, this is a funny thing. I like those little chocolates that had the cherry inside them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, for, for an Easter present this year, my wife, like, and for Christmas, I always get a box. And I have one a day until they're gone. Oh, I won't eat any more wow. than that, but I have Hey, that is very I, disciplined. I, I, I like those. Uh, you know, I guess that would be a guilty pleasure because I'm not really a big sweet eater. Does that make sense? Like I, like I don't need dessert. You know what I mean? Like I'm not one of those people that, like, I mean, I'll eat ice cream, but it's not that big. I can go six months without it. I don't need that. But I, I do like those occasionally. Just that little bit of yeah. little sweet bite. A little capper. Yeah. A little capper. Little. What? What are they? I'm, I'm trying to think of the name. It might be Queen Anne or something like that. They're fancy. Anyway, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. 
yeah, they got a, they just got a, their chocolate and they, they're like a little chocolate round circle deal and they got a chair, you know, a, a, yeah, that's that's your the cherry that like goes in an old fashioned, you know, inside. <laughs> that's, that's the only other time. Uh, that might be a guilty pleasure. Yeah, too, a little old fashioned. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then, I need a little old fashioned. <laughs> hey, uh, tin cup whiskey. By the way, we need to send Hackney a bottle. By the way, just reminding. By the way, I'm feel sure it would make a great old fashioned. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, do you miss bass? Do you miss bass, man? I, I just miss fishing and jet. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The I, guys, I, I would be, uh, I would, I would be lying if I told you that I didn't. Yeah. I mean, the, a yeah, lot I mean, of. I miss all tournaments. You know what I mean? Like, like this year, I worked a classic. You know, I was there. Yeah, when I had, you know, a thousand people come up to me and say, "Man, do you miss not fit?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I'd be lying if I told you I didn't." I mean, you know, I mean, it is, it is what it is. You know, but we just have, you know, we make decisions. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, and dude, and you've obviously done well on the on the MLF Bass Pro Tour side as well. I mean, you're, 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 you're taking opportunities as we might say, you know, but there's, do you, do you ever think it, there'll be a day where there'll just be one league? Like, like it'll just be one thing and then everybody will be happy. Or is it always going to be something or something else? You know, so <clears throat> I, I don't, I don't ever think there'll be just one. There'll always be at least two. I mean, there has been, you know, so just like, you know, competition is good for everybody. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course it is. In any business you know, as so well, McDonald's, I, you know, it, Burger it's, King, it's, it's like, whatever. You know, it's, it, it's checks and balances. You know, you need one to check on the other. You know, so I, I, I don't know. I In a perfect world, yeah, we would only have one. Okay. And I, and know, I, 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 don't, I don't know. We. I, I don't know. You know, this again, this is you almost trying to get me in a political deal here. I, I'm not. You know, and I don't I don't talk about that. But but, yeah, I, I, I don't foresee in, in any time. I don't see I don't see in my future, you know, there being one. No. OK. I, I don't and, and I don't either. So. And and I am I am first and foremost. And I'm just being honest about that. I don't you know, I don't see I don't, it either. And that's OK. That, that, that is OK. That is OK. But I'm just going to be, and you know, we just ha- and, you know, this is the other deal with that. There's a lot of fishermen out there, and they need a lot of places to go. They do. You, you know what I mean? I mean, like, I mean, there's a lot of fishermen out there. So I, I don't know, you know, right now, if, if, even if you only had one, if there's one out there that could handle all of them. There's, you know there's, what I mean? We need more than one. I, I don't know if I should say we need more than one, but there's going to be more than yeah, one. Yeah, but I know what you're – yeah, there's going to be more than one, you know what I mean. You, I know I understand what you're saying. But we got to no, have I, it like the old days, man, like it was in 2014. We can't stack, man. You just said it. We need the, – the anglers need places to go. So why not give them every opportunity to go everywhere they can? Like, as a fan, I don't like it, Greg. Like, sometimes I get pissed well, off. Well, you know, like, that was the reason I did that in 2014. That was the last year that that was possible. Right. All right, so, you know, that was the reason I had to make a decision – I guess like so i fished both tours up till 2007 i could fish them both you know because i started on flw so i fished flw then i qualified for the uh elites and i did and i did both as long well no 2006 so i guess 2006 would have been the last year that i fished both and then it rolled around you know and then the flws came out with their i guess they were the tour events yes flw tour yep or FLW anyway, the deal that I won the uh, East West Fish Off, and then and then you know made the the championship, and then the next year I couldn't. Again, the tournaments conflicted, so it was all the way till 2014 before I could fish both tours again. So I jumped on it because I was like, you know, this might be my last chance. I'm, you know, I haven't done that in 10 years, and I didn't know, but I was like, you know, I was going to try it again. And uh, and again, that goes back to that deal. I, I had a really good, but I like during that period of time in my career when I fished both tours, I had really good years. Like that's when by far it's when I, I've always done the best. Yes. And uh, yes. I think for me personally, it was not having breaks that being on the water every day, you know what I mean? Just going out being, it doesn't matter what state, what lake, whatever, but you were on the water every day. And I think that was the, you know, that I'm just one of those people that that, that was really, that's good for me. But the, you know, but the angler should have, finish. exactly, the angler should have that opportunity. The fans should have the opportunity as well to enjoy 
that opportunity of watching two uh, tours. Well, you know, either yeah, either that or the you know the 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 leagues just have to have enough events where they filled up the cracks. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's, you know, the, you know that's 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 always been like so. We fish whatever full season is eight nine tournaments whatever it is. Now we have twelve months to fish those. Okay, so if you have two a month, we're only talking four months and you're done. You know, we've never really. That, that's always been an issue. Like back in the day when we fished, you know, we had eleven elite events. Yeah. And so we were fishing in 2006 when the elite started. We were fishing 11 elite events and four top 150. Yeah. I mean, uh, top uh, elite 50. E50s, sorry. E50s, so we yeah. Were, yeah. Yeah, E50s. So yep. we had 11 and and you you couldn't. So then I was to that point, we were fishing so much that I was like, I couldn't fish both tours anyway. You know, I mean, I had 15 regular season events. There was the Bush shootout. You know, we just <laughs> had all kind of, you know, you know what I mean? It was just, I mean, none. I was fishing almost the entire year. You know what I mean? I was off like realistically about one month a year and that was uh, one month out of the year and that was it. And then, you know, in 08 happened, the economy crashed and, you know, a lot of people pulled, a lot of sponsors pulled out or whatever, and it went down and it got smaller and it has been ever since, you know, it's never really, you know, I don't, you know, fishing seems to me personally to be bigger right now than it's ever been in our, I agree. Than I can ever remember yeah. more people fishing, whatever. But the tournaments never really came back after the crash of 08. You, you, you know what I mean? Like the numbers of tournaments went down, entry fees went up, you know. Prizes. It just, it never, yeah, it never, it never really came back after that, even though it seemed like the sport blew up around us. You know, there are more high school kids fishing. You know, college came around. There are a lot of things that have happened in our sport since then that have been good. You know, but um, it just seemed like the professional tournament trail just never recouped. You know, I don't know. I don't know why, but it just I don't know if it because it's got so spread out and there's so much other stuff going on. But, you know, we're still at basically regardless of what tour you're fishing, you're still at about eight events. You, you know what I mean? That just kind of seems to be the, the, norm. the number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the norm. Yeah. And, you know, probably in a perfect world, 12 would probably be the number. And we would fish twice a month and we would fish for six months. You, does that make sense? I mean, that would be the. And each you know, tournament's I mean, a million dollars. Each tournament's yeah, a million I mean, dollars. That, that's, even, that's even better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but even not even so much of that, it, it, just that we had more opportunities. You, you know, because that's the other thing a lot of people don't understand. So basically a guy who fishes professionally has eight weeks out of the year to make a living. That's it. Any way you look at it, that's a window. It's eight weeks. That's the window. That's it. You got eight weeks, and it's done. You know, and uh, you better do good. I mean, <laughs> you better do good. And I, I believe I, I'll tell you honestly, I think it was easier back when we had fifteen events. You know what I mean? They didn't all have to be great tournaments. You can make you up. could have you, and even even then, so you could have a bad tournament or two, and you could still make the classic, or you could still make the red crest. But on these shorter, you know, not as much. You know, it's not room. It's not any room for error now. Yeah, you bomb, you know, you're out. You bomb, you're out. Pretty you know, much. you got eight weeks. You know, out of fifty-two, you better, uh, you better get it done. Hey, uh, when people call you an intimidating angler, how how, how does that make you feel? Do you, do you, do you, uh, yeah, it makes me feel good. I don't know why they would say that, but I, but I'll take it. You know what I mean? I, uh, I don't feel into, you know, I don't, I don't know what that, why they would think that, but. Well, uh, I mean, they do. I, I I'm mean, a very, you know, I, I consider myself a very intense angler. How yeah. About that? Well, the intense. Like I'm very intense. A hundred percent, but that could be taken intimidatingly because like, I mean, Brower's intense. They consider him intimidating. Jason Christie. Um, he can turn people to stone just by looking at them. I mean, so, uh, I, I mean, and they say the same stuff about you, man, that you are an intimidating angler. Um, so I got to ask you, like, who intimidates you? Wh who is an intimidating angler to you? He ain't out there. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, he ain't out there. Wow. He ain't out Nobody. there. I don't fear anybody with a fishing pole. That's, that's great. That's great. Fighter gave a very similar answer to that last week uh, as well. You got to feel that way. You have to. Or, or hang it up. Yeah, I know. Or hang it up. Why not? Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's a deal, man. Hey, is um is uh is is squatching uh really a thing to you? Is that is that a, is that a thing to you? Oh uh, yes, it is a real thing. You is know, that... I, I was hoping I'd get to Florida a little sooner than I did. I'd get a chance maybe to to hunt skunk apes. You know, here they skunk yeah, apes. the skunk apes. Yeah, yes, sir. You, you need to ask zone. Yeah, you need to ask zone about the skunk ape deal. He. He's very familiar with that. I, and I've heard the story, too. But, I mean, I got, I want to, I mean, that is a real thing with you. Like, I mean, just like Kumar. That's a, like you, like. You know, I, but th this is the deal. I am pretty disappointed. I spent a lot of time in the woods. You know, I consider myself a woodsman. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> I have yet, I have yet to lay eyes on, on him. I, but I, you know, it, it's, it's positive. You know what I mean? I'm positive about it. I think it will happen. Yeah. And you're, and you are dead serious about that. 100% serious about that. Well, I can just tell you this. If I lay eyes on him, chances are you'll get a chance to see him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be honest with you. The part of the country that I grew up in, if he was really, like, if there were a lot of them, somebody would have one hanging in the shed. There'd already be one. <laughs> <laughs> Come look what I got. <laughs> uh, mounted squatch. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Maybe a rug laying in front of the fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, have you ever considered like um taking a special vacation with Jake Kumar and going and going sasquatching? Like just the two of you? Hold hands and squatch? Yeah, I don't you know there's uh you know there's always a squatch hot spot popping up. I watch a lot of that on uh Discovery and on uh uh you know Nat Geo or whatever and uh, it's cool. You you know this is the deal. I'm a dreamer. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I'm, I'm a dreamer. Me I mean, too. I, you know, that's, it even makes, it even helps me in this whole deal in the whole fishing world. I'm a dreamer. I always dream about the, the, the possibilities are endless, yeah. you know? So there, there are, I do believe, you know, they're always finding new species of everything. There's a new whale that's just recently been found a new species of whale. Well, that's a pretty large animal that's been swimming around out there. Nobody knows about it. There's always something new popping up. So there's always that possibility of something being out there. And, you know, sorry about that. No, you're good. Um, there's always that possibility. You just have to believe. Yeah. And and I know, I mean, I think, I, I dude, the, the, it all starts from somewhere, okay? Um, just like the guy with the hook hand on top of the car. At the, you know, the urban legend, like that started somewhere. Right. That's, that's real. That started somewhere. That's real somewhere, dude. You know what I mean? As creepy as it is, it, it's real. You know, chupacabras. There's those crazy little wolves running around. Um, I think like now here's something crazy. Do you know the, the band Smashing Pumpkins? Um, I do. What's the guy's name? Uh, I can't think of the, the singer's name. The bald headed guy. Uh, Billy Corgan. Billy Corgan. He... Um, I heard an interview with him on the Howard Stern show where he 100 percent was sober at a party, was not just in his complete right frame of mind and saw someone shape shift. Saw someone shape shift. Like like if he's a very intelligent person, this Billy Corgan, he's educated, um, he's straight edge. And he saw someone shape shift. He swears on his life that he saw it. Like, what do you think of that? I don't know. It'd probably be hard to stay sober after that. <laughs> <laughs> you that, know what I mean? Yeah, that's I mean, therapy, man. I, that, you, yeah, but you know, there's just a lot of unknown things out there that we don't have a grasp on everything. You, you know, it is... I, like every time I turn the news on, I just find, you know, they find something, they find a new planet, they find this, they find that, you know what I mean? It's just in, in my mind, it's just any time before we're shocked by what they find. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like there's a day that's coming, you know? So just like, you know, you know, I'm a big sci-fi freak, you know, I love the movie predator. <laughs> I, I, I think any time, you know, that's a possibility. You know, we, we don't, don't know. know. There's, you know, it's a huge 
I mean, we're just this little dot. We are the third rock from the sun. You know, I mean, we are this tiny speck in something that we don't know anything about. You know, we've, we're still pretty primitive. You know what I mean? Like, there's just so much possibility out there that, you know. That big old know. that you big know? old one ounce hack attack jig could come plopping down any time. That's it. <laughs> we become the bait. <laughs> <laughs> That's another part of our movie, Greg. We'll have to work on that yeah. one too. <laughs> hey, who's gonna play you? Who's playing you in the movie? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, you don't know. Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, I'm giving him a shot. And the you part of I mean? Greg Hackney played by Mark Wahlberg <laughs> <laughs> for the Academy Award. Come on down, Mark Wahlberg, you have won. <laughs> and then Greg's in the audience all smiling. It's like, that's me, Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a loner? Are you a loner on tour? Uh, not as much as I used to be. So, so I'll tell you one thing that's changed. So now I stay around guys because we're not allowed to talk to one another at the, at the, you know, in, in the Bass Pro Tour. We're, so I don't mind staying around guys, but like on the, on when I fish in BASS, I pretty much stayed by myself because I don't want to talk to anybody and you could talk to guys like you could talk to the competitors and I don't want any information. So now I can stay around them because they can't talk about fishing. Okay. <laughs> Cause I don't want to know what they're doing. Sure. I, got I mean, you. I enjoy, I enjoy their company. You know what I mean? Like I enjoy all the guys company, but I don't want to talk fishing to them. Who's, I mean, I don't mind talking to them after the tournament or whatever, but I don't want anything. I don't want them to know what I'm doing and I don't want to know what they're doing. I gotcha. Who, who's, so who's your buddy? Like, who's your buddy? Uh, uh, I'm staying with Steve, not, like Stephen Brown and I have room to get. So Stephen grew up in Arkansas. Okay. And uh, I've known him my entire life. And, uh, and so when I started fishing professionally, you know, we roomed together on occasion or we would stay at the same hotels or, and then him and I are staying together here uh, in Florida. And we, stay together at the last tournament and that's your guy steven browning the travel yeah. dude there you go so does he believe in squatches too i don't think so no he ain't he, he, doesn't, don't, he, doesn't, he doesn't strike me as that guy he's not a dreamer maybe no i, I, I don't mean, think he's he's a little more straight laced than i am yeah he he does he, he doesn't got he doesn't got that little dreamer's twinkle in the eye like greg hackney you know what i mean and i mean that yeah, is a good I, way. You know, I have that you know i don't know that weird side you know <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. I, I embrace it. I love it. <laughs> you have to because it, we got to remember one thing, Mr. Hackney, that God made us all different, just like balsa wood, and we must embrace That's it. That's right. We just like two pieces of wood. None of us weigh the same. <laughs> <laughs> that is right. <laughs> hey, I want to ask you before we get out of here, man. We talk on this show all the time about what a proper bassin' man is, and I want to hear from you, Greg Hackney, your definition of a proper bassin man uh you know for me it would be that guy that just does all you know does what he's supposed to just goes out and does his job and doesn't you know so the one of the like so one of the biggest things for me my whole career is never gray line there is not a gray line out there for me okay it's all black and white and wow. i think that 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 that's the proper bassin guy I like that. It's all black and white. Yeah. No gray areas. It's all black and white. No gray area. It's all black and white. I love it, man. Hey, uh, Greg, you know I always have a great time when you come on this show, man. Yeah, well, I enjoy it. it, it it's been fun. Way back in the radio days. Like, remember, like, dude, like a, 10 years ago, you used to come on the Bass Buzz, man. You remember that? Way, way back. Way back. I, I, I will tell you the biggest reason I wanted to come on tonight because I knew I was going to get me a bottle of that 10 cup. <laughs> <laughs> I've been baited into the night. I was like, I'm not missing this for the world. <laughs> well, I, I would like to tell you while I have you on the line, too, that maybe you should get um, a free info packet from Birch Gold uh, forward slash Straycast and put some of your um, your investment into a, a precious metal uh, IRA right there. Or, nice. yes, or <laughs> maybe go to, um, you could go to BubbaandHanks.com, put in code fish and get 15 percent off wagyu beef how do you like that uh, that's even better that would go great with my 10 cup <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're gonna send you some gold bullion and we're gonna send you a half side of wagyu and a case of 10 cup yeah, me. what do you think this, this is 
the best night ever. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you bass fishing I'm, talk show. I, I'm ready for another month of quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, thank you so much, man. I'll, yeah, always, thank y'all. Always a good time, dude. Good luck on the rest of the tour. I'm glad you're back at it. And just uh, keep kicking ass in life, okay? All right. We'll oh, see. You. Oh, and promise you that now that the tour is back up, that you keep up on the social media. Because honestly, we love seeing we love seeing you come out of the woodwork on the social media. I mean that sincerely. Keep it up. Dude. Yeah, keep it up. I'll be honest with you. You know, it was something I was just scared of, and it's been a lot of fun. So, dude, uh, you and your boy, yeah, you're, 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 you're kicking that. butt. You're doing yeah. good. Well, thank you. We'll see y'all, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for Greg Hackney. Take care. Get some rest, Greg. Yes. That's how we do it. Right there. Bass Fishing Talk Show. Extravaganza. What do you think, Ginge? What do you think? What do you want to do? Go to the next segment. You look nervous. Are you nervous? No. Okay. No, I <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's, uh, are we taking a quick break? Yeah. Quick break and on to the winner and out. Correct. Winner and out. Perfect. Winner of the tin cup whiskey and out. Awesome. Kapow. Ciao. Step up your game. It has been said that professionals are only as good as the tools they work with. And Alpha Angler has developed the ultimate set of tools for you, the competitive angler. Alpha Angler Custom Rods, brought to fruition by the passion of Master Craftsman Jake Boomer and 2017 BASS Angler of the Year Brandon Palinick. Alpha Angler Rods are custom made in the USA designed and engineered to be perfect. Alpha Angler utilizes a very unconventional approach to making the very best bass rods from drop shotting to flipping. Alpha Angler's focus is on building perfectly balanced tournament grade bass rods at an affordable price. Join the Alpha Lusion today and purchase direct at alphaangler.com. Step up your game, alphaangler.com. ignition and liftoff as a professional angler i rely on my equipment to be successful on the water and my eyewear is no exception oh yep yep good one six pounder seven pounder from daylight till dark every single day of my life in the truck on the water my amphibia eye gear provide 100 percent polarized protection they're ANSI safety rated for impact and best of all they float Quality jig heads with quality components. With tried and true tackle like the big dude Gobi head, the hunter or Jacob head, or all new tackle like the jackpot net head or buster swim bait head. Bite me. It's a command to the fish. Get the lead out and visit BiteMeTackle.com today. Hey guys, Micah Frazier here. I've got a bait from War Eagle Baits called the Buzz Toad. Big thing lately has been putting a toad style bait on a buzz bait and preferably it's my favorite way to fish one. Uh, this bait here has got a quick planing head, a great hook, and it squeals right out of the package. Uh, the, the body of this bait is big and bulky so it allows you to skip it. It, it planes quicker than a skirted bait would. Um, in my opinion, it's just the way to, it's the way to fish a buzz bait. So y'all check this thing out, it's pretty awesome.
fuel farther, get some Kevin Van Dam's line and lure. You can launch it a mile. Still going. Better stick to fishing. The swim jig technique is one of the most successful ways to put fish in the boat. Time in and time out, Bravani bait swim jigs are just the right tool for the job. Beaming with quality, the Bravani swim jigs come in a myriad of colors, feature the best premium hooks and solid trailer keepers to give you, the serious bass angler, the confidence you need to accomplish your goal of putting more fish in the boat. So go to BravaniBaits.com and start climbing the ladder to swim jig success. Strangers in the night, exchanging strangers. This one was too tight. I'll try another. Strangers in the night. Hello, strangers in the night. What's up? Hi. Hey, hey. Hey, hey hi, on? ho. Hickey, hi, hey. What's going on, JP? Hey, Dicky Mo, and Popcorn What's Fingers. What's yo, yo. Guys? What's happening? Nothing. Greg Hackney, uh, Greg Hackney talked a lot tonight, didn't he? Man, he's a talker. He, awesome. He's he yeah. had some good stuff. He, uh, oh yes, yeah. he did. He read between wow. the lines. You know what I mean? Yeah, a lot of, no <laughs> lot of knowledge. <laughs> yeah, you know how he was talking about how he he was able to get back to the simple things, and he liked it a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm doing my favorite simple thing right now is just sitting in the boat in the driveway. Yeah, yeah. having a couple, having having a couple. Uh, um, Watching the show. Yeah, and and listening, you like to listen to that song uh, during commercials that goes, "Do you like pina coladas?" Da, da, da. That always makes it always makes you feel good, doesn't it, Rye? <laughs> That's not the one I go to, oh. but sure. <laughs> Do you like making love at midnight? <laughs> <laughs> I listen to the whole Beach Boys "Sounds of Summer" three times today oh, there you while go. fishing. Though the harmonies are exquisite. Yes, he, he went to even flow. <laughs> yeah, he, he listened to Kokomo on repeat. <laughs> oh, that'll just make you yeah. that'll that'll hurt brain cells. That's no, I it. skipped that one, Danny. <laughs> Only in your car, it's on repeat. <laughs> it's, it's still on repeat in Danny's car, actually. Oh, yeah, <laughs> can't figure that shit out. Only 60s and 70s Beach Boys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, so let's give something away and let's give away a bottle of tin cup whiskey. Um, uh -oh. but before we do that, I, um, I do want to, uh, to congratulate, uh, Mike Miklos as the winner of the second CalSag Bass Anglers Derb, right? Yes, sir. He smoked them, man. Mike, oh, yeah. dude, uh, kicked everybody's ass pretty much. Mike Miklos, uh, congratulations on the, yeah. uh, on the Derb and, uh, the next one happening June 20th, uh, again, CalSagBass.com. Check it out. It's the premier Tournament organization. Organization. Organization yes. for the region. With that being said, uh, let's regionalize ourselves and uh, and randomize things. And and who's giving JP, did you do it or do you got the randomizer? I got him. You I got a winner. You got a winner. Now, everybody know that Danny is in charge of prizes. So if you have not gotten prizes, you need to get in touch with Danny via Straycast, whether it's Facebook, whether it's StraycastLLC at gmail.com, whether it's the Instagram instant message. Get Danny's attention. He'll get it uh, to Kate at Pro Edge or to our, uh, our sponsors, and you'll get your prizes. So, um, don't, yeah, don't message me. Uh, just message Danny. Go to a e easiest is the email or uh, Facebook DM just for organization. There you go. Now, yep. with that being said, let's give it away, JP. Bottle of tin cup whiskey. Zach Smeaglitz. Zach Smeaglitz. Oh, chain Zach. rat. He's a chain rat. Zach Smeaglitz. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, he might share. Nope. It, he might share it with Chris Grow. I don't think he's sharing that with anybody. No, that's a Smeaglitz <laughs> personal. That's a personal that's pan pizza. I just yeah. noticed how. Look how amazing my tan lines look on the on the uh, my farmer's tan on the thing. You see that? It's like so bright. Oh yeah, so bright and white. It's decent. Yeah, I'm gonna work on that. I'm going. Uh, I'm going to Kentucky Lake. So I'm gonna. Yeah. Go, I'm gonna go there. 
go fishing, and uh, and then I'm gonna go to uh, to nine and six, South Carolina. I'm gonna go fishing out there too, in Lake Greenwood. Is that what it is? Nine and six. It's nine and six or six and nine. If the sixty nine. S- if the six sun <laughs> refuse to shine, <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> I don't hey. mind. What? Hey, uh. What? What? Let me tell you a story real quick. Let me tell you a story. I was on the SAG today. Yeah. Oh, go figure. And it, it is, uh, it is snake season. Oh, yeah? Oh, like, yeah. Like the craziest snake season I've ever seen. Are they breeding? I saw, I saw a thousand snakes today, easily. They're in coming hours. into live wells? Wow. Yeah. So the first, in the first 20 minutes, I had one climb on the back deck, flicked them off there. I mean, no surprise there. They do that all the time. So I'm fishing about an hour and I want to change spots. I sit down, go to hit the hot foot and there's a snake wrapped around my hot foot and starts climbing up my leg. Oh, before I even looked, I just felt something on my leg. I looked down, there's a snake wrapped around my leg. Yes. That was biblical Ryan. I didn't know that you could jump three feet in the air from your driver's seat, but (laughs) it's, it's definitely possible without a James Bond ejector button. (laughs) It took me an hour for my heart rate to go down. So where'd the snake go? Where's the snake? Did you? Well, I did. You know, remember when Bill Dance had that one fall out of the tree, and then he flicked it all around. Uh huh. I basically only did the leg part, like it was on my leg, and when I jumped, I flicked it up, and it went about ten feet in the air and back in the water. (laughs) (laughs) I got attacked last year in Tom Billings' boat. (laughs) Yeah, I remember that. I will never sit down in this driver's seat without looking under there ever ever again. That'll teach you, just like looking under the bed, Rye. You got to look under the bed. You yeah, know, you got to look for Fred Savage. You never, <laughs> you never know what's on. You never so, know what's under there. Hey, um, speaking, you're of- not you're not used to a snake wrapping around your hot foot. <laughs> no, not so much. <laughs> that's right. That's a new one. Yeah, I'm sure down south the guys are probably laughing at that me because it happens all the time. But that, that fingers guy, he you know he that popcorn finger. <laughs> Hey, hey man. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, northern. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. Hey, here's the, the deal. Yeah. All right. Thousands. We're off next week. All right. We're off next week. We did ten in a row. We're off next week, and we come back live from the studio the seventeenth. Right? Is that the math? Mm-hmm. Seventeen six seventeen with um, a, a guest, unspeakable guest. That is all I can say. That is all I can say. Speaking of the unspeakable, I am Pat Renwick, and I bid you peace. I thank you, Bass Galaxy. I remember the simple things. I remember the simple things in life. That's what keep things easy. Now, please, all of you, Bass Galaxy, remember also the golden rule. Do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. You know what I mean? Feel good. It's all about that. None of this BS, none of this feeling bad. So feel good and catch fish, right? And love one another. feeling good? And love one another. That's what we gotta do. Love everybody. Love, 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 and peace. I'm Pat Renwick. I see you on June 17th. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Thanks to all the sponsors. I'm out of here. Got to go.